see my defensive coordinator, Mark Denocchio. John? Okay, Coach, uh, congratulations already on the signees. Yeah. you got the, the, the facts as hot, hot off the press, so to speak, and you've got some great names out there. And, and uh, let's just jump right in on, on, on Anthony Chicklow. Wow. This is a guy that, uh, you know, I have uh, I've been following since he was born. I mean, his mom, Joni, w w was here on campus, her and Tony. The, the dad lived here in the married dorms, and, and you needed Anthony Chicklow to be a part of the U. There's no question. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And uh, we worked extremely hard. I'm sure he'd tell you that we worked really, really hard at, uh, at making sure he was here. It, uh, it was worth it. It was certainly all worth it, and it will be worth it because, you know, as I heard you mention it earlier, um, let's let's not uh, downplay this guy's talent. Okay, first and foremost, he is a great football player. He has tremendous talent. Um, but I think the thing that sets him apart is his desire to be the best, his work ethic, um, his intensity, his natural leadership, which is uh, unbelievable. Uh, when he walks in a room, he lights it up. When he was on uh, the recruiting visit uh, with us, we had 15 kids in, and when he walks in from breakfast, I mean, he has immediate respect from everyone, and that's that's rare. Uh, those are the kind of guys that can you know can come in and have immediate impact uh, right away. They have respect, and those are guys who are eventually uh, captains on your football team and, and, and your natural leaders. So, guy has the whole package. Uh, I'm so excited to have him. You know, and as I told him, you know, the, the current guys on our team. You know, they need they need to be worried about him. That's right. You know, at his position, uh, they they do. They need to be worried about him. And the thing when you got to know the family, of course, you you followed the tradition. The father was in the Hall of Fame. I mean, the grandfather's in the Hall of Fame, an All American here, a two way player at the University of Miami. The dad, Tony Ciccolo, you know, numerous years in professional football, had a great career, and 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 that you know nothing got lost. It, it's just each generation got better. The the, the grandfather's the All American. The the son. Uh, if a dad goes into the National Football League, and now you have the product of, of two generations of great football players in a great family. Tremendous. Uh, for me, it's it's always a great part of the process. You know, some guys like to coach uh, professional football, and, and they don't get a chance to deal with with any of that. I like to coach. I like to coach pros. I just want to coach them before they go. I want to coach them. I want to coach them at the college level. I like the recruiting process. I like getting them. You know, meet the kids and, and get to know their families, and then take them through that four years where you help develop them, hopefully into. Uh, you know, an NFL player, and, and they and they get their degree, and you develop it into you know the type of people that they were already were, based on how they were raised and, and all those things. I love that process. This family is a great family. I mean, they were fun, uh, very very comfortable um, you know, being around them. Real football family, uh, everyone, and uh, great people, and that's why Anthony is the way he is. It's, it's, it's fun to go in the home and have even have the mom put you on the, on the whiteboard and have to diagram plays, right? Everybody knew everything. Tony was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. was great. And, yeah. and, and again, it was it was refreshing. It was really, really fun because they, uh, they're they informed. They know football. I mean, the whole family knows football. So, uh, you know, to go in and have be able to have those kind of conversations, um, you know, it was fun. And it was really fun. Let's go down the list. You've got uh, linebacker Denzel Perriman from Coral Gables right across the street, a, a young man that logged hundreds and hundreds of tackles both as a, as a junior and a senior and almost uh, a almost must-get player. You know, you're right across the street from the University of Miami, Jonathan Vilma's uh, former high school. A lot of great canes had come out of Coral Gables, and, and he's a guy that, that committed recently, and he stuck with it, and he's going to be a big part of your defense. Yeah, I just got off the phone with Denzel as well. Boy, just thrilled to have him as well. And those guys... Uh, you know, Chick and, and Denzel, they're 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 tight already. Those guys are on the same page. You know, Denzel made a ton of plays, got tremendous uh, speed, acceleration, uh, high level high level contact player, uh, those kind of things. Loves football. Uh, and again, I think you'll see the guys that uh, are with us. They love football and they love the Kings. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, they they want to be here. And those are the guys that you want. You can't worry about the ones who don't want to be here. Uh, at the end of the day, the guys will have success who love football. Okay, and they love they love the University of Miami. Denzel is one of those guys. Don Bailey joined with defensive coordinator Mark Inafrio. And, and Mark, when you when you talk about the love of football, uh, people say, "Ah, well, everybody loves to watch it." Now, there's a difference between loving to watch it and maybe loving to want to go to the NFL. If you love the game, you will put yourself through things that that you normally wouldn't put yourself through. No question. And and we want guys who love the game. We want guys who are willing to love their teammates. And and that also enters in the equation that you talk about. You're willing to do things uh, for the betterment of the team. Put, put yourself behind that, put the team ahead. So I think we're getting those guys. I mean, again, the message is very clear. Our message is very clear why we're here. You know, we're here to win a national championship and then some. Um, and we want the same guys with guys with the same mentality. Uh, at the same time, we can win a national championship. These guys can achieve all their individual goals. There's no question. 
Gianni Paul linebacker who was committed to, to a, another university, was recruited by a lot of Southeastern Conference schools, schools in the state of Florida. You, you got into his home, you, you talked to him, the family understood where you were coming from, the, he understood about being the University of Miami Hurricane. Take us through the, the process of, of Gianni Paul. Wow, you know, we, we, I got up there uh, right after the new year um, to, see, to see Gianni. And, uh, you know, it was it was a, it's a, it was a tough process. You know, I'll talk about that later. But the whole thing was real tough. I mean, I got hired on a Friday right before the dead period. So you go the first two weeks on the job, and you can't see anybody. You know, then the next week was like a, a cutoff week. Monday was still dead because of the new year. And we really had three days out, and then it went dead again. So uh, the window was very, very small. You know, and, and that, that first week, I went around Florida, basically. And I saw a ton of these guys that, are, that ended up here. So it was well worth it. And, uh, you know, Gianni was one of them. And it was, you know, it was building a relationship and building trust all the way through the next three or four weeks. And, and we are so thankful to have him because uh, when he immediately said he was going to come, he got that off of his chest when he was going back and forth through uh, what he was, you know, going through in his family of, of you know, making a commitment elsewhere. When he got that off his chest, man, you, you got to see a different kid come out. Um, he's so positive, so fired up, uh, a natural here. You know, started four years in high school, so none of that stuff's going to intimidate him as far as getting ready to try and play here right now. And you've seen some of the quotes from him, which I think are tremendous um, as far as the impact that he wants to have here. Um, I think if you go through, I think Chick started four years, uh, Denzel started four years, and, and Gianni. So, you, you, I mean, you're talking about some guys that uh, got some weather veterans. That's it, man. They're not going to be afraid to come in here and compete and, and make our team better. So, uh, you know, Gianni's really, really bright. Uh, he's already calling me up and asking me about, you know, the defense and the terminology and all those kind of things. So you love it. Those are the guys you love. Coach Golden and, and of course, yourself immediately uh, had a relation, already had established a relationship with, with Olsen Pierre, and you wanted to make sure that the, the young man that you really wanted to make sure was going to Temple came to the University of Miami, and the good news is he was able to, to come in and help you early. He's yeah. going to be a part of spring practice. Yeah, uh, Olsen's a guy that I've, I've watched since uh, he's, you know, he's a junior in high school, got a chance to see him play in the state championship when we were recruiting another player uh, at Temple, and, uh, you know, we had him on our radar. And, uh, you know, really, Al and I, we, we did not even talk to any of the guys that were previously um, committed to Temple. This was a different situation in that uh, when he went down to Fort Union Military Academy, um, every school in the country goes through there, and he immediately jumped off the tape, and everybody kept saying, who's number 11, who's number 11? And uh, we were going to be in a serious, serious dogfight. There were a whole bunch of people that had offered him at that point. Um, when we left Temple, uh, it was clear that he wasn't going to go to Temple, and uh, he was going to go somewhere else and maybe in our league, so we weren't going to... You know, at that point, uh, you know, we just felt like it was an opportunity for us to, to take him. That was the one exception of the guy that we kind of just, you know, made sure that we were going to get here based on where he was, where he was headed. So glad to have him. And coach, when, when the players come in, when when you're when this class is finished and it's signed, to, and you've got your defensive heavy, you've got a lot of players that are that have that have expressed their commitment. We haven't gotten all the the letters of intent in today, but when they get here, and and w let's fast forward a few minutes to to fall practice because not all of these young men that are signed are going to be a part of the spring. What do you tell them when you're in the home about how they're going to be able to play this year? It seems that so many of the true freshmen want to know, well, I want to play as a freshman. Even, you know, personally, I, I don't necessarily agree with that's always the best thing for, for the kid to do, but what do they got to do to compete? What do they got to do to help this team for right. 2011 win football game? Great question. Um, you know, our motto always is, when you're ready, we're ready. Kids ask, when, when am I going to play? Right. And really, at the end of the day, when they come in, they're on the same level as everyone else. I think this class in particular, the guys that are coming in on a transition year, they're in a very unique situation, very unique situation in that uh, they're going to be on the same uh, level playing field other than 15 practices as far as learning the new terminology and all those things that go into a new staff coming in. So uh, they're going to have an unbelievable opportunity to come in here and play. Again, if they commit to being on the team right now, if, if in their mind they're still in high school, and everything else, it's not going to work. Our guys right now are working out six days a week, and, and they're training to get ready for spring. So if they don't start matching that right now and do exactly what those guys are doing, they're, they're going to fall behind. And I think we have the right guys in the class to go ahead and that understand that and, and we'll push those guys when they come in here. Okay, Don Bailey with defensive coordinator Mark D'Onofrio on National Letter of Intent Day, and now we'll throw it back to the man in charge, Joe Zagaki.